Welcome to Rotor Riot. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and I'm here with Alex Vanover. We've snuck upstairs because I want to talk about rates. You've been saying some really interesting things about rates. I've been having some interesting conversations with people on the internet who ask me questions about their rates, and I've come to the conclusion that most people would fly better if they changed their rates. You know, I absolutely agree with you. I think most people personally have way too high rates, or sometimes they don't have enough rate. It just really mm -hmm. depends, but how do you know? So let's, here's what we're gonna talk about. I got an outline in my head for this episode. We're gonna talk about, first of all, briefly, what are rates. A lot of people know what rates are, but just in case. Then we're gonna talk about how to know if your rates are too high and you probably should lower them, and then how to know if your rates are too low, although most of your rates are too high. Rates are when you deflect the stick on the transmitter, how fast does the quad spin? Exactly. So basically, you know, how fast does it roll, how fast does it flip, and how fast does it yaw? 360 degrees per second. That's one turn per second. And if you think about it, that means if you did full stick deflection and you tried to do a roll, it would take you one second to complete that roll. Which sounds fast. But it's really not. But it's in quadcopters, it's really, really not. In an airplane, that'd be considered really fast, but not with a quadcopter. That'd be really slow like this. Right. When you deflect the stick all the way, how fast does your quad go? Now, a lot of freestyle pilots like high rates. Yes. They like snappy, flippy floppies. <laughs> yeah. Like that. They think that they're going to be better pilots because they have high snappy rates. They want to emulate guys like, like I remember a long time ago, Steel put out his rates and they're pretty fast. I don't remember exactly. I don't remember exactly what they were. degrees per second. They were, maybe, they were over a thousand degrees a second. And back then, that was when the Rubik's Cube maneuvers where you do a half front flip, quick roll, and half front flip. That was what people thought you had to have to do those maneuvers. were like over a thousand degrees a second. Everyone wanted to roll their yeah. quadcopter really fast. Um, at the time, and still to this day, a lot of people believe that that's the way to go for freestyle. What's the problem with rates that are too high? The problem with high rates is the quadcopter is really, really hard to make fine movements with, especially depending on the curve of your rates. So if your rates are really, really high, what can end up happening is, let's say you're trying to do just a clean roll and exit like that. Mm -hmm. If your rates are really high and you do the roll too fast, you're going to exit like this. Right. Or you're going to be really jerky and not very smooth and precise at center stick because your rate curve is so much higher. Right. There's two problems with excessively high rates. Number one is, like you said, if you're going to try and do like a snap 180 or a 360 preci precisely, it's going to spin so fast, it takes, you can do it. It takes a lot of practice to get the muscle memory timing exactly right, but a lot of people don't put in that time and you're imprecise. But you also lose control and precision when you're making fine movements. Yes. Because you have to make these tiny little stick movements. Yeah. to get to otherwise the quad is too abrupt and, and that, you can't yeah. move very precisely. And that's exactly why when we say that, let's say your rates are a thousand degrees a second, that's a thousand degrees at full stick. So if you're just trying to make fine little movements on the inside of your stick, you're working with a lot less resolution than let's say if your max stick was 700 degrees a second, then that increases the resolution and your ability to fly smoother at center stick. But that's just some of the disadvantages of high rates. You know, you can't necessarily be as smooth at practice, but there are some also advantages to having higher rates. What are some advantages of high rates? Let's pretend you're trying to hit a gap, like a V gap in a tree, and you're trying to do a roll or a flip or a Rubik's Cube if you're like right. someone like Steel. High rates will allow you to do that maneuver and exit a lot quicker if you can do it precisely than slow right. rates. You know, right. that's, that's an advantage of having the higher rate. So we could say that there's a trade-off between the speed that the move occurs and the precision with which the move occurs. The faster the move occurs, the harder it will be to do it precisely. Yeah. And most people set their rates high because they see these extra snappy, flippy moves, but they don't, they're too high for most people to do them precisely. Exactly. I first experienced this uh, when, I, when I was at a race and I talked to, I guess it was probably Evan Turner, yeah. and he said, lower your rates down to like 300, 400 degrees per yeah. second. And for the first five or six packs, I hated it yeah. because I'm gonna having to make these giant stick movements. But then suddenly my laps were way when you have, when you have to make that mid turn correction because mm -hmm. you're swinging wide. Yeah. With high rates, you can't do it. With yeah. low rates, you can really smoothly do it, and it, it helped a lot. So yeah, I guess we're gonna talk about low rates then. And personally, I I prefer lower rates in general for flying, mainly because I'm a racing pilot. And as you said, with people, you watch all the first. The way I learned to fly low rates is I used to fly a thousand degrees a second, like Steel did, at the first national that that I won. I was flying a thousand degrees a second with zero expo. That's what I raced with. But we're in a new time era. I go to Korea and I see Min Chen and I see people like Evan. They're racing three, four hundred degrees a second. I'm like, how do you? 
do that because I tried it and I didn't like it. But what I ended up finding is they were able to be a lot more precise through the gates because they had a lot more resolution to work with. And usually in racing, you're always just a little bit nervous. It doesn't matter how much you race. And with lower rates, with that extra added resolution, those little jerks aren't reflected in the quad nearly as much as such like right. high rates are. You've got little shaky hands. Yeah, and lower in, rates help smooth that out. That's and, interesting. And in racing, the only time that lower rates can hurt you is if you're trying to do a quick maneuver like a slalom, where you're slaloming right. flags, and you're if you're at high speed, the faster you go, the faster the quad needs to be able to roll. But we're still not really at a point of racing where 400 degrees a second can't do that. But I think right. we might be getting close to it. But low rates are really nice. You got a lot more resolution to work with. Let's talk about how you know when your rates are too high. And when, when they're too low. I'll do too high because I, okay. I have an idea about this one. I think you have an idea about how to know when they're too low. Your rates are too high if when during your normal flying, you never go to full stick deflection. Yeah. yeah. And I was surprised when I looked at some of my black box videos with the stick overlay that even when I thought I was doing like a full stick snap, I wasn't because the quad was moving so fast that my brain just went, that's enough. Yeah. So if you never pay attention when you fly, and if you never feel yourself hitting full deflection on your flips and rolls, lower your rates. You're wasting stick travel. Yeah, exactly. And you're, you're wasting resolution. Yeah, you're just wasting resolution. A reason to know if your rates are too low is we were just out freestyling today. But I was trying to do these maneuvers where I go backwards and I'm right above the ground. And that's the goal is to be just as low to the ground as possible. And I do a roll and then I do another roll, mm -hmm. right? It's kind of, I don't know really what to call it. But long story short, I would do it. And as you'll see in the video, I come out and I'm just full stick the quad and I hit the ground. Right. So that's an instance where you necessarily need to bump up your rates from like I'm freestyling at 450 degrees a second. Right. May bump it, that top end curve up to like 550 or just bump it up just enough to where you're hitting full stick. So if you're, do the maneuver. if you're hitting full stick, I guess we could say and the quad isn't moving fast enough, That's when you need more then rate. you need more. Exactly. And you've actually talked about how you tweak your race rates a little bit depending on the course. Yes. Some courses might need like a, a split S and some might not. Yeah, exactly. So for example, when I went to nationals this year, there were no real fast maneuvers where you needed to, to roll the quad really fast. Um, whereas a lot of tracks where there's slaloms, I end up increasing my rates because I need to be able to do the turns quick enough. So when I get to race, I usually, when I fly the track, I'll feel out, do I really need that much rate? And sometimes I'm literally on race day of three of racing and I'm like, I just need a little bit more rate. And I only make changes by about 2%, mm -hmm. just a little bit. Cause you know, you don't want to overdo it and right. then risk having a crash just a little bit. And sometimes you can even mess with the pits a little bit in order to get the mm -hmm. rates to be faster. But anyhow, yeah, in racing especially, I think that changing the rates is okay. Also flying something you're used to. But yeah, we, we prefer lower rates. Yeah. I think a lot of people flying with higher, and I've experienced this, I've been working my rates down I used to fly at about 1,100 degrees per second, and I've been working them down. I'm now closer to 900 degrees per second. Yeah. And at first you think, I'm going to lose that snap. But what ends up happening is you were going 900 degrees per second anyway, yeah. but now you're actually fully deflecting the stick, and you exactly. gain back so much precision in the center. The ability to do smooth sweeping yeah. turns with precision, it really helps a lot. You exactly. freestyle with 700 degrees, 750? No, I actually, my roll rate is 450 degrees a second on no. roll. Oh That's yeah, so it's low. 450, my pitch is 280, and my yaw is about a one, I've raised it a little bit, it's about 180 degrees. That's basically what I, I race at, is around yeah. 400 on roll. And I bumped it up a little bit for freestyle, and all my videos in the last three months, um, from de or about since December of 20, 2018, have been with about those rates. And you can see when you do some of these maneuvers, even Rubik's Cubes, right. they're a little bit slower, but they almost look, it's like a different look on the maneuver because yeah. you have to be really smooth. And, you know, it's also easier for a pilot like me because, you know, I'm a racing pilot and a freestyle pilot to build a transition back and forth, which is partially why uh, I keep the rates lower. But I'm starting to hit a point now where I want to raise not necessarily my, my overall rates, but just my roll rate. And that's another one more thing I want to touch on is most of the maneuvers we do on quads are pitch and roll. Right. right. And I think roll is even more important. So it's not necessarily important to have all your rates exactly the same. Right? Oh, no, I, I agree. In fact, uh, I prefer to have my yaw rate a little bit lower. Yep. My yaw rate is typically around 800 degrees per second, mm -hmm. whereas I have my pitch and roll rate around 1100. And the That's reason for that is that <laughs> I find that my throttle control is less precise when the stick is deflected. I'm kind of doing two things at once. Yeah, exactly. So I usually keep my yaw rate a little lower so I never have to like fully deflect yaw yeah. and be like, doing that usually the typical thing is your rates are way too high it's insidious because you don't you think no I can hit gaps you don't notice how much precision you're losing yep. until you so here's what I would say as a recommendation if you're a freestyle pilot and you're at over say a thousand degrees per second 
Take it down to at least a thousand, maybe yeah, even nine hundred. Probably not any. Maybe you may be lower, but that's a good middle ground to yeah. be in. See if your snap rolls and stuff still look perfectly snappy. Yeah. But, and especially if you haven't put in a lot of time to develop the muscle memory. Yeah. If exactly. you if you're at thirteen hundred degrees per second and you've got the muscle memory perfect, so you can Rubik's cube. Hey, more power to you. Yeah. But if you're just a beginner, especially or an intermediate pilot, and you're just copying somebody's rates. They're, they may be too fast. Yeah, this is more intended towards beginner, intermediate, and even some pilots who are advanced pilots and just haven't figured out the rates. I mean, we're, I'm always changing my rates. I've, I've come from 1,000 degrees a second to 300, back to 600. I'm settling at about 400 right now. You know, you, it's, there's nothing that's going to stop you from changing rates. It's just fun to go experiment with in, yeah. in beta flight and in flight one. You can just create a new rate profile. And what I do is when I'm testing rates is I put it on a switch. Yeah. So I just, I'll, I'll do a pack nice. and then I'll switch it. And sometimes I'll forget, I'll even have someone set it to where I don't know what's what. And I just mm -hmm. fly it out. And you can figure it out pretty quickly. Yeah. But that's a really good way to kind of, you know, you have the bias. you like, oh, this is high rates. It's going to feel way too fast and everything like that. Personally, my opinion is you don't need more than 750 degrees a second to do almost any FPV freestyle maneuver, except for maybe 1% of high precision through gap maneuvers. And honestly, most people don't really want to watch those. They happen so fast anyway yeah. that it just it looks like something out of this world. So, yeah. What about a recommendation for racers, you know, maybe beginner or intermediate racers? What kind of rates would you suggest they target? If you're coming from freestyle, target around 600 degrees a second. That's going to be a good starting point. Point. That's what I raced at for most of 2017 and 2018. And um, if you're a racer who's struggling to figure out their rates, personally, I've helped a lot of local pilots just by lowering their rates, or sometimes even they were too low, and I increased them a little bit, and I've seen their times drastically get better mm -hmm. on a track like you were talking about yeah. earlier. If you're a pro pilot or an intermediate pilot trying to get better at racing, I would recommend around 500 degrees a second. I know that's what people like Min Chen and Evan like. I like a little bit lower rates, but anywhere in there, you can start playing with the rate curves. So 500 to 600 -ish exactly. is a good starting point. And if you're interested to know what some of these guys' rates are, I know Min Chen, Evan, and I's rates are in Flight 1. And I know Evan and Min Chen have also posted their beta flight rates publicly on their channel. So you can see in my rates, you know, you can just select them in okay. the configurator. So. The last thing I would say is that you're, when you first make these changes, is you're probably going to hate it yeah. because it's not what you're used to. It's going to feel really unnatural. I found that it was only when I started trying to do these kind of precision maneuvers that it really came out. Yeah. You know, so don't don't just try one pack, go, I hate it, and quit. Everybody I've talked to, I've done uh, workshops and stuff where the guys are like, what could I do to fly better? And every single one of them, I turned their rates down. And yeah. at the end of the workshop, they all thought they were better pilots as a result. Even in racing, I, I've noticed the same thing. I think that people could be much better pilots in general if you adjust your rates. Some people don't like to change their steps. They don't like to dive into that stuff. But if you're a pilot who's been flying for some bit of time now and you really haven't found the rates that suit you and you've just kind of learned to adapt to something, go ahead and try different rates. It's not going to hurt you. Put right. some time into it. At least yeah. five, ten batteries is what it takes for me usually to start to liking something or maybe not liking something. But give it a try because it can drastically help your flying. Alex, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Josh, for having me on your on your little like talk here. <laughs> I've, appreci I've appreciated this. Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Rotorite. Be sure to like the video. Comment down below which, what your rates are. Do you yeah. think that higher, lower rates are better? If you, you know, try, if, if as a result of this video, you try different rates and you like them, or if you hate them, let us know. Thank yeah. you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.